we will discuss about generative design for the AEC industry. I am very excited to come to this webinar. My name is Doreen Bularka. I'm an AEC chemical sales specialist based in Dubai office. And as you have seen in the description of our webinar today, uh, in the AEC engineering, we are challenged in the uh, construction industry. We are seeing uh, a lot of uh, challenges due to a lot of design options. We always try to find the uh, uh, shortest time to design things. And also, uh, now the tools are changing, the environment is changing, so we need to have uh, ex uh, explore new ways of doing things. Uh, the session will be about new ways of designing things, um, about computational design techniques that can help uh, automate and improve the design process. We will learn about uh, Project Refinery, which is an Autodesk Generative Beta for AEC industry. Some uh, techniques and examples. We have. We will see some examples of how we can use new design approaches uh, in order to generate, evaluate, and cycle through the design processes. And we will understand the differences between the traditional design methods that we have used so far and uh, compare with the generative uh, design uh, techniques. So uh, I will start with uh, Autodesk vision. So our vision is to imagine, design, and make a better world. And our mission is to automate our customer's design and make processes so they can uh, realize the future of making things. Uh, this will enable them to do more, better, with, with less negative impact to the world. So we have a broad of uh, more than 50 uh, tools, 50 so, uh, uh, software that we are providing to our uh, uh, customers. Uh, and we can design things from a simple uh, um, smartphone or for, from uh, a building to uh, aircrafts. Uh, everything that you see around you uh, can uh, be designed and probably is designed with an Autodesk product. But let's see how uh, we reach there and let's look back uh, at the, from an evolution perspective, how our tools have helped us to evolve and how we reached at this point in time. Um, we started with the basic tools. So we have used the tools that were around us like stone and wood. Uh, this uh, era, uh, which we call hunter and gather age lasted for a few millions of years. Uh, and later on, we learn how to uh, use crops, uh, how to uh, control the environment around us, and how to do agriculture. So in this way, we managed to gather in small communities in villages. This led to a lot of progress. Later on, we discovered uh, steam and how steam can power engines, and this drove the industrial age. And this uh, brought a lot of progress in the world. And recently, we call it recently, looking at a human history, we can say it's uh, quite recent in the 80s, we have uh, moved to the digital age. And uh, uh, in the 80s, we have uh, invented the first computers and we have started to use the computers in order to augment uh, our uh, tools and our capabilities. But until now, if you look at the tools that we have, they all have something in common. Uh, and that something is that these tools require somebody to operate them. So they are passive. They require some skills to operate them. So even uh, the, these tools on the left side, which is a stone and made of stone and wood, uh, even a tablet, which is uh, something more advanced, they are all passive tools and they all require somebody uh, experience to handle them. What we are seeing now, and with the help of the technology that we have right now, we are seeing new ways of doing things and our tools become generative. So generative design is using algorithms to synthesize geometry and uh, all it needs is from you is your goals, and your constraints, and it will generate uh, options for you. Um, the, looking from a technology uh, point of view, how technology has been evolved, especially in the, in the AEC industry, 
uh, Autodesk has led the, this uh, uh, technology de uh, development and uh, for decades it was it was a pioneer in this domain so starting with the era of documentation which has begun uh, it was we can we can consider it in the 80s when uh, autocad was launched and it was a disruptor from for the industry uh, moving on to building information modeling tools like revit for example uh, this helped us to move into the era of optimization. So the focus here is to develop intelligent models with uh, useful data. And now we are moving into the era of connection. So here the focus is uh, on the connection of designs and the interconnection uh, of data. Um, if you look at the tools that we have, um, starting from, from uh, paper and CAD, now we are able to uh, store more data, more information, and that's uh, how our uh, design processes also can evolve. If we look also at the design technology um, and the progression that it followed and where generative design stands, we have to go through a few steps. And the first step was to uh, move from paper to computer-aided design you're using the AutoCAD. Uh, this is what we call traditional design. Um, and we were doing here more of uh, recording decisions, not uh, processing uh, information. It was more to record the information. Uh, we moved into the parametric design uh, uh, era, so associated geometries. We, we started to associate data to geometry uh, we started to use parametric modeling using Revit and um, a few years back, about five years ago, we have introduced also Dynamo for design automation and computational modeling. Um, all these steps have led us to the point where we are today, uh, where we can talk about generative design. And in generative design, as I was mentioning before, we have to describe the goals and the constraints and then we can generate options and then also we can optimize those options and the product that can help us to do that which is still in, in, a, in a beta version is called uh, refinery and i will explain more about this later but the point here is that we have to go through all the stages in order to be able to use the benefits of generative design now let's look a bit on the traditional design methods um, we have used, we have been using sketching since the invention of, of buildings. Since we started to, to design the first building, we have started to use sketch, sketching, and we have used basic principles of geometry. Uh, we used paper because at that time it was the easiest way of sharing information. If you think about a construction industry, or if you think of a building, what it is, it's several individuals which have certain expertise, architects, engineers, MEP uh, specialists, who are sharing information using different ways. In the past, they were using paper as a mean to share this information and share this knowledge. And they were using geometry as a base for uh, mathematics, geometry, physics, in order to, to record this information on paper. With computer-aided design, uh, things uh, became more accurate. Computers helped us to do things faster and to control the geometry faster, and we could even have more precision. Um, if you see on the left side, this is a scan from an old sketch. Um, and on the right side, what we can see is like, uh, it's, a, it's something done with uh, uh, AutoCAD. And you can see here, we can even uh, have all the radius and all this uh, very accurately uh, represented. Moving into the uh, parametric design. So here we started to take advantage of the computers. Um, basically, uh, compared to the traditional way now, we have more uh, computational power. So we combine the uh, one human with the uh, power of one computer so we can create designs. Uh, however, this process is uh, still uh, quite limited because we can design one, we can create one design at a time, and it's actually uh, it takes us quite a lot of time. Um, parametric modeling 
which is a feature that we can find in today modern software like uh, Revit, for example. It's using some simple concepts. Um, we can create relationships between param uh, parameters. Like in this case, we have a parameter called A and a parameter called B, and the result will be C. So this A and B can always change value, but the relationship between them will be this function. So we will always uh, associate these two parameters. In the same way, we can associate in uh, geometry and we can create constraints between geometric uh, entities. Uh, an example of how we can use parametric modeling uh, in Revit is uh, to go through these steps. We can create geometry, we can assign the constraints, we can modify the parameters, and in this way, the geometry will change. So just to show you how it works on a, a Revit model, basically, this is an example of a um, project in Manhattan where you can see there's a lot of density, there's a lot of buildings there. Uh, every square meter is very important. Uh, and here what we can do, we can take the uh, uh, parameters, the extent of the plot, and we can use constraints in order to drive the geometry. We can put a fixed constraint between the uh, facade and the extent of the area. And then we can generate the uh, building with this constraint. Whenever we are changing the constraint uh, per parameter, also the building will change shape. So in, in Revit, we can create this kind of uh, parametric modeling. Moving on now uh, to design automation. This is another uh, uh, step in the, in the process of reaching the uh, generative design. So we call it design automation. And this is possible due to Dynamo. Uh, Dynamo now is shipped with uh, Revit. It comes by default in Revit. In our version uh, 2020, it comes by default. And it's using visual interface to construct logic. Uh, if you think about uh, Dynamo and the positioning of uh, how complicated and, and advantages of Dynamo is a low hanging fruit because um, you don't have to be an expert in C++ or C Sharp or a programming language in order to create automation. Now you can use nodes in order to uh, create your own uh, automation. So from a difficulty perspective and expressive power, Dynamo stands before Revit API and Revit. So it can you can solve uh, a lot of automation using this tool. Of course, if you know programming language, you will be at, in the crown at the top of the tree. Um, Dynamo can be used to simplify things. So we can use, uh, instead of learning programming, in order, this is just a simple example. If you wanna get the parameters of an object uh, in uh, Revit, if you wanna do it using uh, programming, you need to learn this code. You need to learn how to uh, express this in a code way. In a, uh, um, However, if you want to do it in the, using Dynamo, you will just need three nodes. Select the model element, also get the parameter value, so you need a string to express that value. Um, so things are uh, much easier using uh, Dynamo. Now, if you look at the Dynamo, it has a certain uh, structure. So each graph or each script, how we call it, it has a certain structure. Basically, the first part, we are reading information from Revit the second part would be to compute and the last part will be to write that information. So read, compute and write. This would be the, the structure of any Dynamo script. This is a simple example of a script that can convert uh, strings to uppercase. Now, if you want to look at a more complex situation, uh, this is an example of uh, how we can design using Dynamo a uh, structure, a stadium uh, structure. And the purpose of using Dynamo here is to reduce the material waste. We all know that um, steel beams are shipped in uh, stock lengths. Like uh, in this case, we use a stock length of 12 meters. And we want to create a design in which the uh, waste of steel elements that we are cutting away uh, is the least possible. So 
we created this um, script in order to uh, generate the geometry, uh, generate also the Revit uh, model using Dynamo, and then at the end calculate the total waste. Uh, of course, our goal here is to minimize the waste. So in order to check if this design is uh, good or not, we need to create another option. But as you can see, all these options can be created one at a time. So although it's fully automated and with one click of a button, you can generate uh, all the structure, in order to create different options, you still need to do it in steps. So we still can consider this as a passive tool. Um, computational modeling also, it's another stage before we reach the generative design methods. So comput with computational design, we can actually create geometry driven by um, uh, algorithms. And in this case, we use Dynamo to create surfaces that are driven by different geometric uh, constraints. Now, if we want to extend that in a um, building environment, this is an example of how we can create the same building in the same location automatically using Dynamo. Um, in uh, every city, there are certain restrictions regarding the, the area of the building. Uh, of course, every owner tries to uh, maximize the area, minimize the facades also because more facades means more uh, cost to the building. Also, we need to provide some space for circulations and, for, and the entrance of the building. And as output, we can see different values. Uh, we can see the total area of the building. Uh, we can see uh, also uh, utility uh, factors, uh, facade, facade areas, floor plan, uh, floor variation, and different kinds of parameters that we can just generate using one single click. Uh, once we are happy with the design, we can just send to Revit and we can model the same thing in a matter of seconds. We can model it inside Revit. And imagine how much time we can save by using this uh, method. We can explore several options by just uh, moving the sliders. We can change, for example, the plaza position with just one click. But still, as you can see, this process is still um, passive because each option that we are generating, we need to drive it. So we need to uh, select, change parameters, create a new option, evaluate this option. If it's not uh, right, we need to create another one. So this brings us uh, to generative design. And this is how generative design is different than all these techniques that I have uh, ex explained before. Now with this, uh, using algorithms, um, we can decide what problems to solve, what goals must be achieved, and must, what factors are most important to solve these problems. So computers can help organize and prioritize these decisions, but can't actually make them. So only people can, can decide what's important. Um, with generative design, we can generate create options, thousands of options, and also we can also optimize uh, these options. So generative design is actually one human, computational algorithms, and unlimited cloud computing power. So combining all these three, we can generate thousands of design options. Um, in computational design, we have data as an initial um, step then we can generate options and then we will evaluate these options. If the option is not good, we need to generate another one. Now in generative design, we can actually evolve these options. So we can generate options that are driven by a certain goal. Uh, and we can identify that goal uh, at the beginning. And at the end, we can just uh, filter the option that is the most uh, suitable for us. We can do also some post-processing. Uh, in this way, we can have more uh, accuracy and can be more efficient. 
to do this optimization uh, and generate uh, options generation, uh, we will use what we call project refinery, which is a public beta for uh, projects for generative design in AEC. Uh, what Project Beta can do, it can automatically run Dynamo scripts uh, and it can create options. It works with Dynamo for Revit uh, zero and or Dynamo Sandbox.0. Uh, initially, it was a, a research project done for a customer, uh, Vine Wynan, in uh, February 2018, and it became public in November 2018. So now it's open for public. So you can also uh, create an account there and you can install it and uh, start to test it. If you are interested to install it and use it, you can go to this uh, website, autodesk.com solutions refinery beta. Uh, this here I'm providing also a QR code so you can have direct access to this link. Um, there are already some um, uh, examples there which are uh, already uh, ready for you to, to play with. Uh, also, you can take your Dynamo scripts and uh, run them using Refinery Beta and you, you can uh, generate options. So, as I mentioned, a generative design preparation requires you to understand what you want to achieve. So, you want to set the goals first. You need to define the problems. Um, this will require you to know how to use Dynamo and create Dynamo scripts. Uh, also, you need to decide on the ways on how to measure success and think about how to review these results. Uh, types of studies that we can do in uh, Refinery are uh, four and we can use Randomize. So basically, just to give you an example, we can have two parameters and in Randomize, uh, a refinery will combine randomly these two parameters and we will get five designs. If we have five values for the parameters, we will have five designs. We can do also a cross product. So if you have a range of parameters uh, with five values on one and three values on one, it will cross, uh, it will multiply each, each one of them and it will do the cross product. So we will get 50, 15 design options. Another way is to optimize. So to optimize, we can use three parameters in, in one uh, example and in the other one, another tree. And we can uh, decide on how many generations we want and the population of this. So in this case, we will have uh, uh, six generations with the population of three. So we'll have 18 designs. And also we can explore like this. So basically like this allows us to set up the parameters so uh, exactly and then what uh, generative design and refinery will do would go a bit to the left and to the right of those values and it will give you uh, design options that are close to the values that you have specified. Uh, you will understand more about this when you will start to, to use it to use the tool and see how it works uh, uh, but just to give you an idea on how you can generate options uh, basically, you can provide your Dynamo scripts. You can, uh, and in Dynamo, you can open Refinery directly. And like this, in this example, where you can create a building, you can decide um, the kink offset, the tower height, uh, and the base height, and then you can generate several options automatically based on these uh, inputs and based on the um, optimization method that you have specified. Um, I'll give you another example for um, construction uh, sector, like how do we can optimize the position for a building. So first, we will have to create the model in Revit. The next step would be to read the context and the data using Dynamo. Third step if, is to do the analysis and to create uh, the, the final script using Dynamo. And we can use Refinery to generate options. So it would look like this. Basically from Dynamo, we can go to the view tab, right click and refinery, select the generation uh, method, select the um, parameters that are relevant. Also, we can specify the numbers of solutions and we can create a new study and then the refinery will automatically generate different options based on my inputs. 
Here, after I uh, finish, the, the results are finished, I have the option to visualize the results. So I can change um, what I can visualize here on this scatter plot. So on a Y axis, I can see the uh, crane position, um, the V and U, also the, if the, the, the liftable size and also the lift score for each uh, position of these two cranes. Also, I can see this kind of uh, uh, diag diagram display and this allows me to filter only specific options. Uh, like in this case, I want to have only the designs which have a very uh, low lift score, meaning that all the uh, elements can be lifted uh, from my uh, design options. So plenty of uh, options that we can uh, uh, explore. And once we decide on the option that is the most optimal, we can generate that into Revit automatically. Another example is the um, tower design building that I was showing you previously. So in the same way, we can start with the data and the constraints. Uh, we can optimize it with refinery. After we optimize it, we can select the best option, the best solution. And once we find the solution, we can generate the model. Um, this is how the script looks like. It can it can become very complex, but uh, it's uh, it's done in uh, steps, and we can group also. Dynamo has the power of grouping specific nodes, so we can identify um, the, the each step of the process. Um, also, what you need to do in Dynamo in order to have the nodes um, the the parameters as uh, the, uh, refinery parameters, you need to right click on the input and make it is, is input, like previously shown in the video. Right click is input, this will become a refinery parameter. So we can create uh, the setback of the building and we can design also all the floors uh, the plaza location also can be customized on different uh, sides. Based on different sides, we will have different inputs. And once we are ready with the Dynamo script, we can just launch refinery. We use, in this case, we will use an optimize generation method. We are considering just these four parameters and as outputs, we, we will try to maximize the total area minimize the facade area also we can uh, unused building we can minimize the unused area of the building also we can check and minimize the number of floors also we can define the population size and the number of generations and then dynamo uh, sorry the refinery using the dynamo uh, script will automatically generate hundreds of design options based on the constraints that I have specified initially. Uh, after that, I can start to identify and um, select the most optimal uh, design option. So I can see on the Y axis, the total area. Um, on the X, I can see the facade area. Also with the size, so if I see a, a big size bubble, it means it will have more floors. Also with color codes, I can use uh, a fill, uh, parameter, output parameter, which is the floor variation, which in our case, we try to minimize as much as possible. Also, we can see all the details of these uh, options. And based on different plaza positions, based on different floor levels, we can also identify different facade areas. I can use also the scatter plot back. And once I'm happy with the, one of the designs, like in this case, we will choose something that is in the middle uh, range for total area, total facade area, number of floors and floor variance. We can actually rerun the study and 
we use the send to Revit option, so we need to check it. And now when we are running again, we are uh, running again the study, the building will be automatically generated directly in Revit. So that option that we have specified will be automatically generated in a matter of seconds in Revit. Now, imagine how much faster we can do all these calculations and all these designs using the power of uh, cloud and computing power. Uh, another option that we can do using refinery is uh, urban planning. So for urban planning, we can also specify the constraints. Uh, also, we, we need to generate a computational model using Dynamo and using refinery, we can optimize these models and find the best option. And the last step would be, of course, to generate the optimal result in Revit. So this would be the, the, step that, the steps that we have to. Uh, for this urban planning example, we have used uh, a real case, uh, which is a small city uh, in Europe. Basically, we had a plot there that we I, I, I identified that is empty. Um, and together with the customer that has this requirement, we, uh, we uh, checked and modeled this uh, data. We brought this data into Revit. Um, after we uh, decided on the extents of the building, the parameter, the parameter uh, of the uh, location, we, we also have surveyed all the trees because this was uh, uh, some green area with trees. So basically we wanted to evaluate how many trees we are saving based on each design option. So just to show you how that worked, on the left side, we have a Revit model with all the trees that have been surveyed. And on the right side, we have the Dynamo script um, as an input, we have selected the, um, er the parameter distance, uh, area of the plot. We have also selected all the trees that were surveyed. You can see that, again that the Dynamo script can look quite complex. Um, also, we can customize different inputs for the plaza, how big the size of the plaza can be also the, the main roads direction can be also customized uh, using uh, Dynamo inputs. Also, we can customize the distribution between commercial space, retail space and residential uh, spaces. So we can use different uh, color codes for this. So after we finalized the Dynamo script, then we had to move into the uh, refining process, we use refinery. So from Dynamo, you can see directly, I can launch refinery. I can specify my requirements, my constraints. So basically I wanna reduce the agency. I wanna uh, maximize the visibility. Um, percentage of three saved should be maximum. So we should save as, as many trees as we can. Also, we can even input the years to pay back. So in how many years we can get the return of investment on, on these buildings. Any, anything that we can quantify using uh, some values can be created using the Dynamo uh, logic, and then it can be used as a parameter inside of a refinery. In this case, we have more than 10 parameters and using the scatter plot, I can visualize hundreds of options that were created, generated automatically. I can use the filters directly on the scatter plot, so I can identify only specific values. And again, I can see even the revenue per year based on this uh, layout, on this design. Again, I can use another way of visualizing the data and I can apply filters uh, I, we have even uh, identified the, vis the visibility at the entrance from uh, the visibility from the entrance. Um, but of course, you need to keep in mind that all these uh, parameters need to have values. We cannot say 
we need good visibility we need to put a number what good means so if it's good visibility we need to give a, a rating of one if it's bad visibility we need to give a rating of zero so uh, and then we need to decide what does it mean good visibility and we have to create an algorithm which uh, establishes this uh, relationship in this way we can um, make uh, use make use of dynamo and refinery to uh, find the best option um, another good example uh, is that we have done uh, with our Autodesk research team is the our office in Toronto. Basically what happened, we have rented uh, some um, retail space, some uh, empty space in the building and we have used generative design in order to identify the ideal layout for 400 people who are supposed to move into that uh, building. The building is uh, in central downtown Toronto. It's called Mars. Uh, if you Google uh, Autodesk Mars project, you will find more about more information about how this was done. So basically, this was the, the building where we uh, rented the offices. Uh, these two floors here are where our Autodesk office is. Uh, it was an empty, uh, nothing there, just the columns and the beams. And we had to come up with uh, the best layout possible. And we have used uh, generative design in order to find this. So here we have considered three factors that we wanted to maximize. So that is productivity, collaboration, and buzz. And we have translated these uh, factors uh, into parameters uh, and we have quantified these parameters as work style, daylight, just to give you an example, um, also interconnectivity. And we have measured and put values to all these uh, factors, like for example, daylight. If a floor plan ha has more daylight for each uh, of the inhabitants of this uh, building, then the score will be higher. So. We managed to create these mathematical formulas that can translate the intensity of light into scores. Also, distractions uh, was considered one of the uh, parameters. Views outside, um, also we, we managed to uh, come up with a formula which gives us a rating based on how many people can uh, have a vision to, to outside. Uh, agency preference, so how long it takes for certain uh, users to move from one another or to uh, reach uh, the pantry area or the meeting rooms. Uh, based on the, uh, we, we calculated all these distances and we came up with uh, uh, also numbers that give us ratings based on different layouts. Circulation was considered, work style, also work style preference. Acoustic destruction, of course, where areas where they are more dense are closer to meeting rooms, we will have more uh, intensity of noise. Uh, and if we have more situation like this, then we have a low rating for acoustic destruction. Again, we came up with a formula uh, on how to measure this. Also the low density. So we try to make the space as open as possible. Uh, the next step was to define the constraints. Uh, of course, uh, we had some geometrical constraints uh, for these floors. Uh, we had uh, the columns, uh, the external windows, which are fixed. So this we couldn't change. Also, based on the number of people uh, that are there in the office, or basically 250 people, we had uh, to uh, quantify how many meeting spaces we need, how many social spaces, how many speciality spaces, and how many facilities uh, spaces we need. So this was also fixed, and this was also a constraint. And we use different color codes for uh, these different spaces. Uh, then we have, after we define these measurable goals, uh, we have started to use refinery in order to generate different layout options. So what you see, you see here, with uh, blue color are the meeting rooms and what you see with uh, yellow color are the desks uh, and uh, we have generated different layouts 
using uh, re refinery. So in the end, we have come up with thousands of layouts. Uh, from these thousands of layouts, you will see that some score high for interconnectivity, some score have a very score high score for daylight. In the end, uh, each floor plan received an overall score. And um, we have identified 10 floor plans, which had a very good high score. And then from, from those 10 floor plans, we have choose one, which became the base for our uh, current uh, floor plan layout. So this was what the final floor plan is look like. This is the uh, second floor, this is the third floor. And uh, based on the generative design uh, option that we have uh, identified, we have uh, created this uh, final layout for the office space. Now, just to highlight some of the things that were a bit unexpected and maybe some, some uh, things that um, architects uh, would, wouldn't go so far as, as designing, like, um, we can look here, this is a slanted wall and it gives us some advantages actually because using slanted walls, then we can place more uh, meeting rooms around it. Um, irregular shape become uh, semi-private informal spaces also. Diagonal lines between neighborhoods allow fitting more meeting rooms, as, as I was mentioning, non-orthogonal, uh, non-parallel boundaries obscure sources of distraction. So if it's, we can place here a wall and we can obscure the sources of distraction. Another interesting thing, this uh, back alley or this re residual space um, became, uh, had a, gave us a better score for agency. Uh, neighborhood expanding outwards because uh, the team would prefer natural light. So everything was draw back a bit so everybody can have more light into their uh, offices. So this is an example of how we used um, generative design, but generative design, it shouldn't be uh, considered as a, as a single technology that is used in a project. It can be actually linked to more other modern technologies like virtual re reality. So we can even visualize all the uh, floor plans uh, before we, we create them, before we start to uh, modify the office spaces, we can use virtual reality. Why not? After we have the B model, we can use internet of things to monitor, uh, let's say for example, the temperature inside the building. So just from the B model, we can change the temperature uh, in different uh, buildings. This is just an example. So generative design should be viewed as a, as a piece in a, a larger broad of technologies that can be utilized. And this brings us towards the uh, end of uh, our presentation. Um, generative design is, you can see here, we need to go through some steps in order to reach it. Uh, we have started with design automation uh, using Revit, Forge, Dynamo, Autodesk provides tools that help us with the design automation process. Uh, other tools that can be used are Dynamo, Revit, Fusion 360, Formit. This can be used for computational design. Uh, generative design is next. So Project Refinery, you, it can be used with Dynamo, it can be used with Fusion 360. And in the future, we don't know what will come. Uh, we will start to use machine learning. Uh, will it be Dynamo? Will it be something else? We don't know, but the technology is evolving very fast. And as you have seen during this presentation, we have uh, walked uh, such a long way from paper, which gave us so uh, limited options to uh, using the power of computational uh, uh, design, using the power of cloud and using the power of thousands of of computers that sit there uh, and are connected using the uh, cloud. Now, at the end, I just want to share with you some interesting links. So uh, you can find more information about Dynamo at dynamobeam.org. 
Um, here we have also an article regarding the introduction of project refinery and how it can help you. Uh, more information on generative design, we have a dedicated web page here, um, redshift.autodesk.com if, if you want to learn more about the future of making and how to use different technologies to create and design in a more uh, effective way. Um, there's plenty of classes uh, available for Dynamo, hundreds of classes at Autodesk University. Also, there are classes about generative design. So you can just go to the Autodesk University website and type generative design and you will see a number of classes there. Uh, if you want to use generative uh, design methods and if you want to use Project Refinery, um, it's uh, al already available for public. So, uh, but keep in mind, it's, it's still a beta, so it's not a final product. But um, our purpose is to get feedback from you. So please feel free to register. Please feel free to use it and feel free to, to think of uh, new possibilities and new ways of using uh, this tool. Of course, we are at the beginning of a, of a long road, the same uh, like it happened when CAD was introduced more than 35 years ago. Uh, when first version AutoCAD was uh, int uh, introduced, that was only the beginning. Now, here we are. Now we can generate automatic uh, floor plans. We can uh, explore different urban planning methods using uh, automation. Also, if you want to learn more about this, you can contact me directly. So my uh, email address, sorinbularka.autodesk.com. Also, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm usually uh, sharing uh, a lot of information about latest technology that Autodesk is providing. Um, and this is it, that's about it regarding generative design. I hope now you have a better picture of what it is and how uh, project refinery can be used. Um, in the few minutes that are left, uh, I will open the floor for, for questions. However, if you have questions, um, please feel free to reach me directly. I will keep these links on the screen. So if you want to create a snapshot, please feel free to, to do that. So uh, let's see, I will open the question tab and see if we have any questions. How long does it take to put the scripts together from the examples you've shown? This is uh, one question that we have from Damon. Um, depends on the example. Um, it, the scripts were not designed uh, continuously, like working on the same scripts. It was uh, done in, over the period of three months. Um, and we worked on parallel on different scripts and we keep improving them. And we, so basically they evolved in complexity. But uh, you can say, uh, depending on the, on the project, if you want to design a, a tower like that, you can consider like maybe a few weeks in order to have like a proper a script. You know, uh, another thing, in, except creating the, and, and Producing the logic in the scripts, you need to uh, consider also that you will need to uh, make them accurate. So <clears throat> it will require a lot of testing because if uh, the scripts are, have errors, uh, you will not be able to use uh, refinery. Okay, uh, any other questions? Some people mentioned that they were not able to see some videos. However, uh, all the this webinar is recorded. So the links with the registration will be sent so you can um, rewatch. So if there's something that you missed might be due to the, your internet connection. Uh, any other questions? Any feedbacks? Do you think this is something useful. I heard questions uh, from uh, 
when I presented this technology, some people or in the audience were wondering if this would replace architects uh, or engineers in the future, in, the, in, a, in a few years. And uh, the answer, my answer to this is, it's, is no. Basically, you can use generative design to have new freedom. Uh, you can use it to expand your capabilities, to augment your capabilities. Basically, everything that we have done here is more like uh, automations, things that are, are not necessarily um, uh, uh, design, uh, creative things is more like uh, algorithm and automation that we need to process. So we can take the burden of calculations and automation, uh, we can give it to computers and we can focus only on the creative part. We have another question. Is it possible to have a list of email invite that went to a specific company? Uh, sorry, don't I don't get the, your question. Okay, so I think this is it. For today, uh, we are just four minutes until 3 p.m. Uh, I will uh, stop here. Uh, thank you a lot for your interest. Thanks for uh, watching our webinars. Keep an eye of the upcoming webinars and please feel free. If you wanna learn about more, use these uh, links. Also, please contact me directly. So have a good day, everybody. Uh...